So before anything else, William, I got to ask the question that I, I, I know you talked about a little bit, but I don't think people know this enough. You spent, what, about three months here in Northern California for development camp, then training camp, and the start of the season. You only lived in a hotel the entire time you were here? Yeah, I did. Does that get old after a while? Yeah, after a while, get a little old. <laughs> I mean, you get... You get um, room cleaning, right? And uh, probably fresh sheets all the time. But I mean, that that must have been an interesting part of your life. You were you were doing something so important, but you were so isolated from friends and family. You know, they were obviously still in Europe. Yeah, of course. It was a good learning ex- experience for me. You know, a first like living by, m- by myself and not having my parents or friends around. Uh, but also... Yeah, as I said, a good thing for me to to live by myself. You were so focused, obviously, on hockey the entire time you were here. Did you have the opportunity to even do anything else? Did you see any of the Bay Area? Did you go to San Francisco? No, I was a little bit in the Bay Area. uh, Since in a row, a couple of times, the mall there. And yeah, went to cinema actually one time. So it was, yeah, it was good. First, you said first time away, like really away from home? Uh, yeah, but it's long. I will say yes. Wow, um, you got a, a true taste of the NHL. I mean, training camp and everything, and you know, a road trip and what the whole season starting was like. Um, just getting that taste, did it did it motivate you? Or, or now that now that you're you're removed from it, does it frustrate you? Does do you wish you could jump right back into that opportunity again? Yeah, like I think it just motivates me to get even back even stronger. Of course, I would like to be there and be competing with the guys. And uh, you know, I just it's a motivating thing for me to to get even better next year. Help me pronounce uh, Jurgarden. I I always am fearful when I say it because I I don't think I'm saying it the right way. I think you're saying good Jurgarden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your your garden. See, I, there's too much D in my. It's just your garden, right? Yeah, you're going. Yeah. All right. Tell me what what's the biggest difference? I mean, now that you've had the taste of the NHL and now you're back in Sweden, what's the biggest difference in terms of teams and what you do every day? I think the biggest one is like obviously the ice. It's a big thing. Mm-hmm. You know, the ice level and uh, how big it is in Sweden. And uh, yeah, like everything around was was so like big in the NHL, you know, and Everything was new for me coming there, so it was um, this is way bigger for me because I, I didn't know what to expect. And now I'm just trying to find my my grind and get better every day at, at some small details. You talked about that quite a bit when you were over here. You know, obviously the smaller rink in North America versus the wider rinks of Europe. So, so what does it mean for you, especially as a winger, when you don't have those extra? You know, seven, eight, nine feet on each side. What are, what are the specifics that matter to you in terms of what you were trying to adjust to? You know, it's like if you get a little less time, obviously, because mm-hmm. you have to make the decision with the puck earlier, and even when you before you get it, you had like a split second to do do a thing with the puck before you get it. So that was a that was a thing I, I was trying to get like take with me back here and trying to to work on here as well mm-hmm. uh, even if i watch time here i'm trying to work it work on it prepare myself for the future so can you basically make more plays in europe can, can everybody make more plays in europe just because of that that extra real estate that extra space yeah i, I would say so it's it's like yeah for me, it's it's in NHL, it's like close to the net, you can say, but here it's so much wider, right. so you can maybe round players easier and stuff like that. But yeah, I think so. Bob Bugner said that he thought you actually played quite well in tighter spaces. He thought that, I, I don't know, it, it, it forced you to, I don't know, be a little bit more creative. Or Do you think he... Do you think he was on to something there? Do you, do you think he recognized something that, that you can play that, that game to? Yeah, I hope so. And like I I think I just better and better. Mm-hmm. And I tried to like yeah, all those small details. Obviously when it gets smaller you have to make the decisions because 
like if you don't make them, you you're gonna get the guy on you. So that was the thing that I wanted to change like right away and get better at. You know, we talk a lot about the size of the rink. How about just you? I mean, as a 19 year old, this is crazy, uh, William. I'm I'm 40. <laughs> It's like, I, I feel now talking to a guy like yourself, I, I feel like I'm getting really old, but I also feel like your your maturity is incredible. And I want to talk about this in two ways. Number one, um, let's just go from the physical aspect. How, how do you see like you getting bigger and stronger in your 20s? How do you see that only helping you? Yeah, like I got a taste of it when I was there in NHL. Mm-hmm. Like how... How strong some players are in the corners and stuff like that. Yeah. I want to be able to hold on to some players and not even sh- not just shake them off like with my skates. So I think that would benefit my game just to to get even stronger, so I can yeah get get to the net a little more. I mean, were there ever any? I don't want to say intimidating moments, but you realize to your point, like when you are going up in a puck battle, a fifty fifty battle, and you're going up against a guy who's 32 years old, been in the league for seven, eight, nine years, big and strong. Like there must have been some moments like, oh, wow, this is just the age thing alone and the size thing alone, like body size thing. That must have been weird, huh? Yeah, like obviously not nothing you like used to. Yeah, I I got a little taste of it in Sweden when I met, met all the guys here. Right. Yeah, but of course, they're better players in NHL. That's also real skilled. So you have to be aware of like everything because, yeah, you know, you have to be prepared to, to like battle for those, those small pucks. Yep. Where do you think you get uh, your maturity from? And I know your dad, a professional hockey player. I'd love to talk about that later too. Is some of it just how you were raised or why, why do you, I mean, you, you do so well at this for 19. Why do you think that is? I think I'm trying to learn from the best players on the teams I've been when I was younger and when I grew up, you know, coming uh, like a 16, 17 year old to, to your men's team, mm-hmm. just watching the best players every day and how they act outside of hockey and, and also on the ice. That's, that's a big thing for me because I want to watch those play and like, I want to be better. So I had to, to try to like take those small things and just do it. I know the Czech Republic and Sweden are two totally different places. Us here in America, we, we all just know that it, they're both in Europe. But the reason I bring that up is is you got to play on Tomasz Hurdle's line. And I was curious, the first time you saw your name next to his on a lineup sheet, um, what was it like to play with number 48? And I don't know, may, maybe do you see kind of like a, a future of yourself in, in what he's gone through in the NHL? Obviously, it was a cool moment. Yeah, to just get my name there because he's such a skilled player and it's a guy you really want to learn from. Uh, so for me, I just saw it as a learning point for me, but also a chance to prove myself to be, be playing good because I know uh, our play styles will benefit each other well if we play good. So, yeah, I think it was good. When, uh, when you had chats with Dahlin and Carlson, they talked to you in Swedish? Yeah, <laughs> is that is that is that pretty common with Swedes? You think? I mean, I I do feel like uh, a lot of the Swedes, especially, they, they bring their language into the NHL, especially when there's te- and there's you know there's always a couple on every team. I feel like they they uh they like to speak Swedish. You guys do, huh? Yeah, I think I think it's just natural, you know. <laughs> like when you when you talk to a guy, you just you know the, the word better in your own language, so you want to try that first. Got it. That <laughs> makes that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, when you played the opening night game, and by the way, you had an assist on Tomas Hurdle's goal, first goal of the season. Um, you know, it's it's normal for even veterans to have butterflies and crazy emotions, and I mean. Can you describe what opening night was like and going through the shark head? And like I said, if everybody's a bit nervous and anxious, you must have been. How are you feeling? Yeah, of course, it was a special moment for me just to see like the dream could come for, come through. Really, mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah, and you have been dreaming after this was a little kid. So, and 
yeah, it was a good, like a crazy atmosphere. It was just, it's fun to get out there. Do you have any other siblings? I, I should have done the research, but I'll just ask you here. Four brothers. Four brothers? Yeah. So, wait, you, wait, so you are, you are, you are one of five? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. What are their ages? I'm the oldest. They're 15, uh-huh. uh, 15, eight, six, and a two-year-old. Oh my goodness. So I have, I have a four-year-old son. So, I mean, you know, you know what it's like to have little ones running around, uh, not your own, obviously, <laughs> but, um, so wait, that's got to be part of the maturity too. You're the oldest of five kids. Like y- you have to be a leader in your own family a little bit. Yeah, of course. Like I want to be a, I want to be a role model for them. Yeah. As some players been to me. So I want to be like. I want them to see me as a as a as a guy they can look up to, and you know, in the social life too, and you know, hockey. So I'm just trying to, you know, yeah, be a good role model for them. That's a good point too. Not just hockey, but away from the ice, right? You want to be a good person. Um, let them see that. So, so what else do you do away from the ice? Um, you're not playing hockey. Let's say it's in the summer. What do you What do you like to do? I like to play paddle tennis okay. a lot and play golfing sometimes. I'm not, not that good, so but I'm I'm getting my game better. Um, yeah, I like to do a lot of a lot of sport activities. Yeah, like to be yeah, doing something every day. Nice. Uh, and by the way, I, I don't know where specifically you live in Sweden, but um, these winter days can get pretty short, right? Like you only get a couple hours of sunlight. I live in Stockholm, so it's better oh. than the north. But uh, yeah, that's true. You go like you can go in for practice in the morning. You see the sun a little bit, <laughs> then you come out after practice. I don't know. There's no sun, so it's yeah. You try to catch those sun hours. <laughs>